Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Filter in Photoshop Explained, we're going to be taking a look at the 3D filters. So this gets a little bit out of the scope of Photoshop, but Photoshop does have the ability to generate different types of 3D maps, known as bump maps or normal maps. So if I'm working with a texture such as a photo of a brick wall, and I press Generate Bump or Height Map, you'll see it'll open up some of these 3D menus that are available in Photoshop, and we could see what this textured photo might look like applied onto different 3D objects like a sphere or a cube. So the basic idea of it is it's taking the luminance values or like the darkness and the lightness to find contrast in the photo and generate differences in height where it's lighter, that's such as the white and black where it's darker, that's where it'll raise or lower the surface as a texture. So within this menu, I can choose different ways to preview it. However, this would only be for if you're going to actually take this and save it as a texture and then apply it later in some 3D rendering program. This is common in like 3D softwares or video game production, uses textures, flat textures such as these to map them over surfaces. You can also see what this might look like with different types of lighting, just for example, and you can rotate around and spin around these objects. Now, when I press OK, this isn't actually gonna generate a cube or a pyramid or anything like that. It just has generated our height map or our bump map. And with this, we can go to the 3D layer section and we could push things like 3D extrusions or creating a mesh from the depth map. So if, if I press create, it'll apply this height map and you can see it's kind of extruded things out based on the luminance, the lightness, and the darkness textures. If I scale it along the z-axis, I can make this brick wall maybe just a little bit textured. And if I rotate this around, you can see it's not anymore just a flat object. There's a little bit of texture to it. Now we've created this 3D object on our composition, and we can move it around wherever we want, but I can go and add further layers on top of that. So I can add different layers whatever I want really, under or behind this or with this. And within this 3D menu, you can also generate shapes and different things like that that will appear as their own layer as well. So you could create 3D shapes in this way and move around 3D cameras. However, if we revert back to our original photo, when you do create these 3D bump maps or normal maps, you can always adjust some things about them like the amount of contrast or the blur. And you can just use these as textures. You could save them as PNGs or depending on the 3D software that you're working in, whatever file type that it prefers. And you could load them into your 3D softwares and apply these textures onto whatever surfaces and shapes you create in those programs. The other 3D option you have is the normal map. So instead of working with luminance values, this one works more with the red, green, blue, or just the different color values. And, but you have the same kind of idea. Once you create this as a texture, you can then use this texture to, you can either save it as a PNG and then load it into other programs and use it as a normal map. A lot of these programs will t accept normal map textures and apply them onto surfaces as we saw in the previews. Or you can use it right within Photoshop. But this is just a very brief introduction to some of the 3D features that are available in Photoshop. And in the next episode of this series, we're going to take a look at the blur filters. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.